specifically some guys that I'm working with on a, a new game t a team uh, are not familiar with Get on Windows, and I'm suggesting using uh, Tortoise Get. And I'm going to show you how to set it up and uh, the basics of how to use it. Um, if you are on Linux, uh, you can install Get uh, specifically. I again, I would say. I would suggest the command line version for any um, anybody using Git, but um, you can get it through the uh, your package manage system. Um, if you are on OS X, I suggest Source Tree if you don't want to use the command line. If you want to use the command line, uh, then it's uh, Homebrew or Magports or whatever. Um, this is. This is what uh, Source Tree looks like. Um, so it's pretty, uh, and it's really good for being able to look through the log and see who's done what and what branch, or you know, if you want to grab a different branch or whatever. So that's that. So. Uh, getting started on Windows, what you want to do is go to code.google.com slash p slash msysget. Um, I'll put links in the description. Um, I would suggest uh, go to downloads, obviously, and I would suggest uh, well, either of these two installers um, will serve you well. Uh, just go with the default install. You're welcome to not, but I'm going to be showing you the default. Um, once you've run through that, you can go over to code.google.com slash p slash tortoise get, and then go to downloads and pick the download for either 32-bit or 64-bit, depending on what version of Windows you're using. Uh, you should be safe with 32-bit either way unless you're using Vista 64 or Windows XP 64 and then you're screwed if you don't get the 64-bit version. But if you're on Windows 7, uh, either way the 32-bit should work but it won't be optimized. Anyways, so uh, when you install this, there will be a point where it asks you if you want to use PuTTY or uh, msys get. Well, I'm going to show you the msys get method. So select that if you're following this and don't know how to use the, the putty version. Or wouldn't rather use the putty version, in which case you can look somewhere else for a tutorial on it. Probably isn't that hard to set up. In fact, I'm pretty sure at my old job that's what I used. Um, so anyways, after it's installed, uh, go to start menu, all programs, uh, tortoise get, settings, and on the very first page, this general, you'll want to go to the MSES get section, hit the ellipses, and um, if you installed the, with the default settings MSES get, uh, it should be in the local disk, MSES get, and then bin. Okay, and then we're gonna go over to get, and we're gonna put in our name and email, and that's just um, for when you're using remote repositories. A lot of times they like they use it as a way to label who is sending this. So click OK. We're done with setup. So. Uh, I'm going to give you two little scenarios. The first is that we have been working or have just started this project and we want to make it a repository. So we click on or right click on the main folder that it that contains it and click get create repository here. You'll probably have to reboot before these items will show up in the the context menu. Um, click OK. Unless you, I mean, you can read through that on your own and 
that option might be good for you, but just for this sake, this is what we're doing. So I'm going to add a file to this. Okay. Uh, we'll just say that this is code. And we'll add the code. So to add this file, you can uh, right click on the file, tortoise get add, and check the box. Or hit select, deselect all. Click OK. Uh, now, if that's all you wanted to do, or if you've uh, done some other stuff but you're ready to go ahead and commit, uh, you can hit commit here. Or you could have hit OK and it would have just disappeared. Um, and the commit window will pop up. Uh, down uh, up here is where you put your commit message. So we added the code five. Uh, or just the gold and down here so, sometimes uh, for instance if we hadn't added this if we had modified it uh, it might not be checked down here so you can go down here and this is uh, all the check boxes are the ones that it's actually going to commit those changes to the repository so you'll want to go down here and make sure that all the boxes that you want checked are checked and then you can click OK. And it's now committed to our local repository. Um, if you have a remote repository, remote repository set up, then you can go ahead and, uh, that you have write access to, you can go ahead and push if you want. Uh, but we're not going to for this project. Um, yeah. So we can just close that. So now we've got our uh, our first uh, commit. Let's say we added some sort of uh, local settings file. Uh, so settings, and you'll notice that there's a check box, check mark here, and that is showing that the uh, the uh, this is the most recent version. Uh, according to the repository. Uh, the question mark means that it doesn't recognize this fo file or folder and um, so if you wanted to add it you could or if you wanted to get rid of that uh, question mark or get it out of the get status if you're um, if you're using the command line you can right click uh, tortoise get add to ignore list and you can either do all files of that type or that particular file uh, if you're doing this from command line then what you would do is you would either create this dot uh, get ignore file or you would edit it to add this file to it uh, you can also add folders recursively uh, which is pretty sexy click OK because we just want to add it and uh, so there's that and you notice we've also added this uh, this get ignore well instead of explicitly adding it actually I'm going to edit this code real quick and save and close it so you notice there's a exclamation mark showing that we've changed this code since the last repository. It has changes in it that don't match um, what's being preserved in the repository. Uh, changes that we probably want to commit. So we're going to go back out here. Uh, if you're trying to do a bunch of um, commit stuff at the same time, I normally go up to the top. Um, you can just do it on any file in that folder um, but whatever uh, right click get commit and added code and we also yeah sorry this is in a this is on a Mac laptop laptop in a VM very Windows friendly and we're also adding uh, where, where adds the 
git ignore file. Yeah, okay. Uh, now you notice that down here it says ver uh, not version files. This is where you can click the checkbox to add that file at the commit time. That's uh, just the same as right clicking and adding, um, but it's a little more convenient. Click OK. And again, if we wanted to push this to a remote repository, we could do that now if we wanted to. Or we could right click, go to the Git menu, and go up to push. Uh, if there were, if we wanted to check and see if there were remote changes, we would pull. Um, you can also do git sync, which will, uh, it's a little, I don't ever use it. I'm guessing it's a little kinder, um, but you can play with that. Please don't play with it and with our repository, but you can play with it with somebody else's repository or a test repository. Anyways, so if you wanted to uh, clone, you could grab a repository from GitHub or Bitbucket, wherever, and go, damn it, and go wherever you want this repository to be. What is going on? Okay. And right click and get clone. And if you've just copied it, it'll automatically paste it in. And uh, this directory would be wherever you right clicked and you can change the, the folder that it's going to put it in if you want or you can just click OK. And that goes out to the remote repository, grabs all the code, makes this a local uh, version, a uh, local repository, and adds that remote repository as the origin uh, remote repository, which is kind of the default, um, this is, it, it's a naming convention, you can really name it whatever, but automatically it's going to call it origin. Um, now one of the key things in get is branching. Branching is fantastic. Uh, what happens is you take the code that you have right now and you branch out and you can do whatever changes you want you can even commit those changes you can even push those changes up as long as you push it to the same branch in the remote browse, remote repository um, and as long as no one else is touching that branch you don't affect anyone else until you merge it back um, so first thing we're going to do is check out and we're going to make a new branch and we're going to call it uh, add code and click OK. And that made us a new branch and automatically checked it out for us. Now if we didn't check it out for us or if we just wanted to switch back to the other branch we could uh, click this and it was on V2, so we hit V2, click OK, and we're done. If there had been any conflicts, it would pop up and let you know that there had been conflicts, and then you could use Resolve uh, to see where those conflicts were and try and resolve them. Uh, now let's say we wanted to uh, merge, oh, crap, sorry, getting ahead of myself. Uh, let's say we wanted to merge that branch that we just made. We've made changes in it, and we want to merge it back in to um, what would be our development branch. Um, well, first of all, please ask. <laughs> um, on GitHub, if you're doing this with someone else, or, or if it's like just some third party people, what you would do is fork your own repository. Uh, then you would you would clone your repository and then make your changes and then you would do a pull request um, if you're working with a local team or a team that um, has 
that's working together uh, a little more collectively, uh, you'll have to set up your own method. The way we'll do it is we'll have the master branch, which is releases. Uh, we'll have the develop branch, which is where the development, it's the, the quote unquote master of the development work, uh, where eventually uh, the changes are put that will become a release. We'll have a, um, uh, I'm not sure what we'll call it yet, but some sort of queued branch um, that you can merge into, or merge the develop branch into, and then merge your branch into to request merging into the development branch. Anyways, the way that merging works, which is what I was getting at, I uh, say, okay, so we have been doing work on our add code branch and we're ready to merge it over. The first thing you do is you uh, check out the, or switch to the branch that you want to merge it into. So we want to merge it into V2, do okay. Okay, and then you right click and pick merge, and then you pick what you want to merge into the current branch, which would be add code, and click OK. And if there weren't any conflicts, this is what you'll see. If there were conflicts, again, you would go over resolve and try and fix it. There's a lot more to get, um, but this is a rough beginner should get you through most situations. Um, and if you have any questions, uh, put them in the comments below or contact me directly. Thanks.